Hey everybody, Ben coming to you from Ben's Audio Cave. How you guys doing today? I hope you're doing great. It has been a pretty hectic week for me. I had planned on doing a different video for you guys today, but uh, I had some stuff that didn't come in. Uh, so make sure you watch next week uh, for an interesting turntable video. Now this week, I'm still got some great content coming for you. I'm actually gonna show you guys how to set up your own digital streaming server for high res and high def streaming. Now, I do apologize for the way I'm talking. I had some oral surgery, and you, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and pre-disclaim that before I get slammed about it, so that's okay. Um, so, what are we gonna do today? Well, a lot of us, uh, as seen in one of my other videos, have a habit to transcribe some of our music from vinyl to digital. Why? Not really necessarily because we're looking for the sound of our turntable or we're looking for uh, the pops and clicks or any of that that some people, you know, buzzwords say. It's generally because the master, and we visited that in another video too, of what's on these shiny black circles over here is sometimes a lot different, less compressed, different, better sounding, uh, or just what we prefer uh, to what's going to be out there on a streaming service. Uh, you can look at the waveforms and everything. I've got my setup set up to where I can really easily, you know, just record an album as I'm listening to it. And that's great, but now here, let's talk about the reason why you would do this. Uh, number one, because it's somewhat free. Um, I'm going to be using Plex to do this. Plex is available. It's got free versions. It's got a Plex Pass that gives you some extra options. $4.99 a month, $79.99 a year, 119 lifetime. Do the lifetime. It's a great deal. It works on anything, pretty much. Mac, Windows, Linux. Uh, NAS boxes, whatever. Clients, it works on your iPhone, it works on Android phone, tablets, TVs, you name it. There's there's a Plex client for just about anything. Uh, for the longest time, people have been using Plex to do video, uh, to record their shows, to catalog their digital downloads of movies, but recently Plex has adopted the flax streaming format for their audio and i've been using it on my iphone for a long time why because i've got some out of print stuff over here there's nowhere to get it on a streaming platform i don't necessarily want to carry around on my phone all the time uh so i throw it on my plex server and it's available anywhere and i can download it offline if i want to as well just like on any other streaming service um i've got some high res digital downloads i paid for um they're like 24.96 you know, I've got them on Flack, I've got them uh, on DSD, I've got all these other things. Sure, it's there. If you've got a library, why wouldn't you do this? So, um, it's pretty easy. For me, I'm a portability guy. I, before COVID, I was all over the place. I spent a lot of time on either an airplane, uh, which at that point, you've got noise canceller, wireless headphones on generally. But I spent a lot of time behind the windshield of my car. And, you know, I've always kind of been a car audio guy. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull any punches. Generally, I have an elaborate high-end DSP aligned, like, crazy aftermarket car system. Right now, I do not because I bought a new car. I actually don't need it. My car came with a 17-speaker Mark Levinson surround sound system. And I'll tell you what, it sounds great for an OEM system, but... You know, what's missing is media. So, when I'm sitting at home, I like to just, you know, pull an album off. Flip it, put it on the turntable. Drop the needle. Sit back, right in the sweet spot, and enjoy the music. But no, in a car, there's a few more distractions. However, if you've got a good car stereo system, and a lot of these, uh, after, a lot of these OEM audio systems these days are ridiculously good for what they are. Um, why not have that same experience in your car? 
And that's kind of where I'm at. So if I'm uh, tooling down the road and I want to listen to a uh, my Alice in Chains uh, unplugged album, the way it sounds on my turntable, the flak does a pretty good job of uh, catching it when I record it 2496. And I just open up my Plex amp and uh, pop it on my car play in my car and boom, I've got, you know, 24, 40, uh, over 48. Now it does require a reasonable internet connection. It's going to tap the internet connection and upload from your house. I've got gigabit fiber here. It's great. But if you've got, you know, it, this isn't a terrible uh, load. Uh, also too, a lot of people say, hey, you've got to have X amount of hardware for a Plex server, blah, blah, blah. That's for transcoding video. Audio, it really doesn't hit the server too bad. So if you've got a NAS, if you've got an old computer, an old laptop, uh, you could probably make it on a Raspberry Pi, but I don't suggest it. But I I'm just using an old retired uh, desktop over here that we'll be looking at. It's got like a Core i3-4130 on it. I did stick some extra RAM in it, but I mean, it's, it's not much. If running Windows 10, could just as easily be running Ubuntu Linux just fine if you are looking for a more free option, but it runs fine on Windows 7, Windows 8, whatever. You know, whatever you've got. Uh, so I'm gonna take us over here, log into the computer, and we're gonna get started. I've got some pre-staged music from my library that I've copied over to this computer just to kind of walk you through this. If there's any networking or anything we need to talk about, we'll walk you through that too. Uh, I'm a computer, computer guy by uh, trade. So hopefully this is gonna be very helpful to you guys. But it'll let you get the same experience, hopefully, that you're getting here in your car, in your ears, uh, all along. And hey, you won't have to subscribe to another streaming service to make that happen. All you'll have to do is uh, put in a little work, roll up your sleeves, and uh, click a few buttons, and you should be going. All right, let's go over here and get started. So here we are, guys. Uh, we're at our Windows 10 PC. I've got a few things on here for us. Um, first things first, let's go over here and let's kick us off a download for Plex. So I've went to Plex.tv over here. We've got sign in, sign up, premium, all this good stuff. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to scroll on down here and go to Plex Media Server under Downloads. Now, see, it sees that I'm on Windows, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and download this. And that didn't take long, right? So, we'll give this a minute. Okay, now we've got our download ready to go. Let's go to our downloads. I don't know why I made this an edge. Hello. There we go, finally. And now it opened like five of them. This poor computer, I'm doing a lot with it right now, including taking this video, so. This is pretty straightforward. Let's go to options here. If you guys have a smaller C drive and want to install this on a larger drive, that's fine. For this computer, it's one big RAID array. So I'm just going to take the defaults for that. And then I'm going to tell it to install. And of course, I have to do all the stupid user account control, stupid human tricks. So we're doing that. And we'll give it a second. Now, meanwhile, I will tell you, there is a couple of things we're going to do here. And one of them is, I don't know how familiar or comfortable you guys are with whatever router. Hopefully, you guys are using an external router, not your ISP's provided router. If you are, you can still do this. But we're going to have to set up what's called port forward forwarding. And to do that, uh, 
there's a couple things that have to happen. Uh, first things first, well, this is installing. I'm going to go ahead and just let it install in the background. We need to set a static IP address here. Now, I know for a fact that my IP range for my DHCP is over 100 on mine. Uh, so you may have to go and extend an exclusion in your router. Let's just pretend for argument's sake you don't have to, and you know anything you use under 100 is going to be fine. So let's do this. I've connected with this computer using wireless, which is fine. I could go here and walk you through all the stupid human trick settings, but I'm not going to because the easiest thing to do is to hit Windows R, type in Control Panel, and hit OK. I'm a computer guy. This is the easiest place. Then, if this came up like normal, it would be showing like this, which is not helpful. So, we want to turn on small icons, choose Network and Sharing Center. Now we see our internet connection, right? We'll click on it. Hey, look there. And this is, like I said, this old computer. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to properties. And this is going to temporarily disconnect my internet connection. So I'm going to go here and the only one I'm concerned about at this point is uh, TCP IPv4. And I'm going to go to properties and tell it to use the following IP address. So now I'm using the 192.168.0 schema here. We will give this one an IP address of uh, 50 or of 60. Okay. Subnet mask. These are things you could go to details on and see. Um, I know my default gateway. DNS. I tend to use Google. And that's 8.8.4. I sometimes use open DNS, but we'll just use Google for now because that's the one I can remember real easy. Close. Okay. No network access. And we should be getting your access back. So now we can close everything. And let's just make sure that our internet's back working. And it is, yes, I went to Yahoo. Yahoo! Okay, so you don't need to see that. So, let's go here to launch our Plex server. It's updating library. It's doing all its Plex things. And look at there. You see it running down here in the bottom. So you see it at login. Uh, it's going to automatically check for updates. It opened in Chrome, which is may okay. Now it's asking, would you like to sign into your Plex account? You have to create one. That's that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and. Do continue with email, and I'm going to tell it to sign up. And I'm going to tell it, Ben, at bensaudiocave.com. You can contact me there, by the way. Um, then I'm going to give it a password, and for this one, I'm going to not going to tell you guys what it is. So I'm going to save it. Oh, I'm out of coffee. And it's going to spin for a second. Thinking, thinking, thinking. All right. So if you notice, this is the... Let, let's look at this real quick because I do want to show you this. Notice this port right here, 127.0.0.1, that is our, like, home IP address. If you type that in any browser and you've got a website running on your local machine, it'll bring that. That just, just points back to whatever IP address you've assigned down here. In this case, it'd be 
192.168.60. It's a quick shortcut. So now this 32400 that is actually uh the port which our plex server lives on so let's go back here to edge real quick and let's do 192.168.0.60 colon 32400 okay that didn't work All right, something's, something's weird. Let's try this again. Do, 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 do. There we go. <laughs> okay, Plex scans your media. Got it. Plex Pass. You get premium features. Downloads. Enjoy your media offline on Android and iOS devices. So you can download stuff. Uh, server dashboard to the play history bandwidth, blah blah blah. Premium music mag madness, uh, magic, sweet fades, loudness leveling, lyrics, and more. Uh, I don't like sweet fades and loudness leveling. I want it to play what's on there. So, no. However, I will tell you, I have I have this Plex Pass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it, no, why don't you go away. So let's give this thing a friendly name, and we'll call this Ben's Audio Cave Plex. Allow me to access my media outside my home. Let's see if it works. Technically, this should UPnP our firewall and put a rule in there. And it says it's okay, but I don't know. So now, I've actually got a very specific library I want to add. I don't want those generic ones. I want to add one for music. And this one I'm going to call Hi. Def music. And I'm going to tell it next. Now I'm going to tell it browse. Now here are the drives of my machine. What I've done is I have put one in here called Plex Music and see I've got a folder called High Def. And right there's my other. So I'm going to hit add. Now that's got the right path and I hit add library. And let's we'll tell it next. Now, get Plex apps. This just tells us we can have it on everything. I've already got that downloaded, so that's fine. So I'm going to hit done. What kind of sources do I want? I don't want any of this. I could add title to here to let me access it from one pane of glass. If I want title, I want it regular. I don't do podcasts, web shows. No, I'm, this is just a music server. So I'm going to tell it to finish that. Now it tells me my home screen is empty. So, but here, I've got my managed libraries. And it's still scanning it. That is why that we're doing, that we're, you know, stuck here for now. Now, what that means is this whole scanning thing it has to actually, it'll go through here, it'll look for metadata on these tracks if they don't already have it. It'll do this nice organization. So we'll probably have to come back here to this. So let's flip over to our iPhone client. And I'm going to have to use an iPhone because I don't have, uh, I don't have an Android device. I have an iOS device, but it's very similar to the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over uh, to the screen on the iPhone and kind of show you how this works from there. Okay. All right. Here we go. 
Okay, so here we are, and we're going to start looking for a Plex app. So I've already downloaded it. This is an iOS device, iPhone 11. So let's go here and open up Plex. So I need to sign in here. So I will continue with my email because that's what I signed up with, this one. And we'll sign in. Okay. So this is right now. It's going to ask me which one I want. Oh, uh, because I'm on local network. So I want this. And I'm going to take everything off here. Except for that. And hit continue. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this local network off too. Just so we have what we're seeing. Now, these are all the high def albums that it automatically added. So if I go in here to Thriller and I hit play, it's going to pop up and say there is a playback limit. So I tell it not now. It'll actually play for a second. But meh, you know. So, if I choose, let's, let's, so, there's that. We can buy this for $4.99 and just keep this forever, but that's not what I want to do. Because, if we go here and open up the other thing I like to use, because this works on CarPlay, both of these do, is um, Plex Amp. And it's going to tell us we have to have a Plex Pass. But I do have a Plex Pass. So I'm going to sign in with the one I have a Plex Pass for. And it's going to tell me to select the library. And notice here I've got vinyl. I've got this, that, and the other. I'm going to do high def for right now. And we've got our source here. Now I can always go back and change that. Now, if I go to music quality, Wi-Fi, maximum. Cellular, maximum. Playback. Uh, audio output, follow system. We want that. Loudness leveling, I never want that. Sweep fades, I don't like that either. Equalizer, it's nice we have one, but I don't use it either. Um, and that's about it. So let me go here to downloads and look at this. Downloads on cellular, yes. Prefer download me, refresh downloads. Quality, maximum. So that means if we're on a supported format like FLAC, we'll always have that. So if we go here to CarPlay, see we've got radios, advanced. We can change our player name. We've got a limiter. Uh, there's all sorts of nice little features here, and we can also cast this to something else or an AirPlay device. So that's good. But now, if I go here to my music and I go to my albums, hey, look there. There is a iRobot, Alan Parsons. I can randomize, I can do all kinds of things from here. Uh, so if you notice, there's this cool visualizer, and look at there, this is in, uh, actually in DSD. Wow. So isn't that interesting? So now if I go back to here, because I've got all manner of things on here, and start this one. This one's ALAC. So this is Apple lossless. And this Plex amp, it actually shows us our format. Now, I suggest getting the Plex Pass forever for 119, the best value. If you can only swing 499 a month, awesome. If you can uh, uh, afford a year, maybe. But if you're going to go for a year for 80 bucks, you might as well go ahead and go for the whole thing. So this is Plex amp, and it's interesting. So let me go here and let me sign out 
of this because I don't have a plex pass here. And I'll tell this not now because I'm going to sign back in with my real Plex account, not the one I created for you guys to show you. And now I can use either one of these, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just use this one and I'm gonna get rid of all this junk on here because I don't care about it. That's the Plex includes stuff. So now, this is my Plex library. As you see here, I've got original music, standard def, vinyl. I go over here to vinyl, and I look at Adele, because this is just. Then that's on here. Now, I will say the Plex itself interface is not nearly as nice as the uh, Plex amp one is. So, well. So let's go back here to Plex Amp, and we'll go home. Uh, if you remember, if I go here to settings, I can go to my source. Let's go to vinyl here. And I'll go home. Now, music, albums. So we have Dale 21 here. We'll see what this is, because I've actually have like some stuff that's compressed on here too. So this is a wave. And that's playing its native format. And it says right here it's 4416, which is neat. Now if I go here to, let's see. I'm trying to find a good one here. Let's go here. I think this one's good. Let's see. So that one's an MP3. So no, boo. We don't like MP3, we fear MP3. Uh, couple MP3s. Okay, so apparently I put this one on here in MP3. But this should give you guys kind of a, oh, right there it is. So this one is an MP3-256. If I look at this one, it is an MP3-256. Now if I go here to tracks, we've got a bunch of singles and stuff here. So if I look at this one, this one's ALAC, 4432. So, this is some pretty neat stuff. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen recording, and then we will uh, go back and uh, wrap some things up. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Let's. I, I wanted to come back here for just one more thing. So let's go back here, and let's open up our Plex Media Server here. And it tells us our screen is empty. But here we go. There's our high def music that we've added. Now, what happens if we want to add another library? It's asking me to go premium here. We'll do that later. I can go to settings. But what happens if I want to add another library here? So I've got these two things. I can either add a library or I can go to more actions. More actions will let me manage server. Optimize database, do all this stuff, scan library files. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click this plus button. Now I'm going to tell this music, and I'm going to call this one transcribed vinyl. Why? Because it's going to be transcribed vinyl. So next, now I'm going to browse for media folder. I've actually Got this one already set up. Let's see here. F C um, D. Uh, 
let me go take a look see because I don't know exactly where I put this guy at. So let me see. So I've got C vinyl rips. Okay, so add folders, browse for media folder. C where are you at? Flex music. Vinyl rips. Add. Add library. So now we've got this library here, and then we start to see some stuff happening. And this is scanning our library as we see it. Now it's going to start popping stuff in here. These may not have metadata on here, these various artists. So if you look, there's uh, this is actually the, uh, the Wings album. So we can go here and we can fix some of this metadata and stuff. But this is how we would add another library of music to our Plex server. And now this is going to show up across all of our devices whenever that we want to go listen to it in our car or on the go or whatnot. And it's going to play this in the native format that's on here. So we've got switched on box. But notice this is grabbing. Uh, this is actually grabbing metadata and everything else. So if we go here to match, let's see if it can find us something here for this. It may not find it. It may. Let's see. Okay. Wendy Carlos switched on Bach. So there we go. We're going to pick that one. And we got a fix match. Aha. Look at there. It fixed it. So this one. We'll see if it'll do it too. Because this is neat. We'll see. It's fixing Stigley down here. Uh, match. And it's looking. Ah. Wings at the speed of sound. And see, this is the great thing, because if we have some metadata problems on here, it will actually fix them for us. Uh, most of these are going to, you know, it's still doing its thing, are going to be uh, refreshed and everything's going to look good. So, so we have all of these. Um, Albums that it's adding and it's it's getting our album art and everything. I don't have album art for all these things in here. So, all right. So this, uh, I, th I think we've got a pretty good understanding now of how Plex works. We've added our vinyl collection in here. So let's go ahead and wrap up a little bit. So there you go. That I know that may have been a little bit long and a little bit nerdy for some of you guys, but... Let's look at it this way. If you guys are really wanting to take your music on the road with you and you've got, you know, some stuff that's not terribly mainstream, this is really the best way to do it. I mean, you can put it on your device, but then you're just going to be shuffling in and out. You can have this anywhere, any device, anytime. It requires a minimal setup. And it looks like that Plex has even uh, stepped up their game with the UPnP. I didn't have to make any additional settings on my router to make this happen. You can get away cheaply by doing the one-time $4.99 payment and using the uh, you know standard pass. Just go ahead and get the Plex pass. It's, it's super easy. It's pretty inexpensive for a perpetual. You always have it licensed. That's, that's what I've done, and it's uh, I've, I've had really good results. Then later, if you want to get into video or set up your own DDR for over the air or whatever, you've already got your framework built. But the quality of the sound is really great. I mean, I compare it to Amazon HD and Tidal and Deezer and all the other platforms. 
in my car, it sounds absolutely fantastic. And it never hiccups. I can be without signal for a long time. It never hiccups. It does great things with your metadata. It puts it in there. It shows you things about the artist. It is your own streaming service. And I mean, you, you've seen how easy it is to set up on Windows. It's just as easy on a Mac. It's just as easy on Linux. And there's tons of guides out there. All right, guys. Well, if you found this video helpful, make sure and give me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment and uh, let me know uh, if you'd like to see me do something else. Uh, if you are enjoying this video and other videos like it, make sure and subscribe to my channel. And uh, next week, I promise you, we're going to get back uh, to the turntable. I've got some real interesting stuff coming down for you. All right. Till next time, I'll see you later from Ben's Audio Cave.